Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Happy New Year to one and all. I know it has been a lengthy break, but we are back with another episode of Cricket Spectacle, and hopefully, there is going to be a string of episodes from here on. I am Sadhat Gulati, and I have with me the usual suspects, Nikhil Deshpande and Dan Gardner. For us, an interview is much more than an experience. It's a way to express ourselves and also understand the person sitting on the other side of the table better. There's plenty of information, anecdotes, and even newsy material, but the starting point of something is what matters the most. That reveals all and seals the deal. So let's get started. We bring you the story of Iceland cricket, who are waiting for an ICC affiliation. There are challenges, but with what we have researched and read, there is massive scope for growth of the sport in the country. Also, the Indian media is a big fan of their cricket team's Twitter handle. Every now and then, they come up with a hilarious tweet, which gets covered by most of India's media agencies. So, without any further delay, please welcome Mr. Bala Kamlakaran, the chairman of Iceland Cricket. So, it's good to have you on the show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me, and thank you for covering Iceland Cricket. Yeah. So, uh, sir, before we get to our questions on cricket, I just have to ask you: How are you, and how is everyone in your family? Because this yeah, another um, variant is uh, spreading at a lightning speed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, we've been very fortunate in Iceland uh, because we are a very small country, so it's easy to uh, manage and track and uh, take care of the population. Uh, most of the population is vaccinated. Uh, not just uh, two shots, but uh, the booster as well. So the um, obviously the spreading of the new variant is uh, alarming, but the only uh, saving grace here is that uh, it is not as um, uh, you know deadly as the few variants that we have seen before. Uh, very few hospitalization and very few people taking uh, health care um, services. So um, uh, uh, to be more, uh, even more personal, I got the COVID on December 19th. So the holidays was quite uh, slow and uh, was also quite cozy because it was just us family, the four of us. And um, uh, but I had no symptoms. I had no uh, asymptotic. Uh, I was totally asymptotic and um, I was back to normal within a couple of days and it was just a very light cold. So so the things are uh, much better in Iceland. Uh, but that being said, uh, I think uh, uh, we hope that uh, this variant is the beginning of the end of this pandemic. Hopefully the natural vaccina vaccination of this uh, variant might, uh, might prevent uh, more people from getting the future ones. Yeah, hopefully, I think uh, that should be the case. So I'll begin with my questions before I switch ends mm -hmm. with uh, Nikhil and Dan. So, uh, sure. you know, just to start off with a very basic question, uh, how did you, uh, you know, how did your journey start with Iceland cricket and uh, how would you rate your experience so far? Right. So, um, I mean, Iceland cricket was... Uh, founded by a bunch of Icelanders almost um, 30 years back. And they were just intrigued by uh, the ashes, actually England playing Australia. And, and Iceland has a very good uh, relationship with, uh, with the United Kingdom. And there's lots of Icelanders who work there and there's uh, diplomatic relations. So people travel and they know the sport of cricket, but nobody had started or played it in Iceland. So it was started and they started playing. I moved to Iceland in 2006. Um, my wife is Icelandic, so we used to live in the US. We moved uh, because we just wanted to be closer to family. And, um, and, and then I, I learned about uh, the, the cricket through uh, one of the British uh, embassy officers uh, who I happened to meet uh, during a professional setting. And we just started playing and it was, it was, it was just fun. It was just uh, maybe five, six of us who would uh, come together. And then suddenly there were more people and um, there was no organization. There was no association. There was no uh, any, uh, you know, formal formality to the game. We just started playing. Um, I uh, used to play cricket uh, back in India. Uh, I'm from Chennai and uh, in my uh, youth, I actually uh, was very serious 
about cricket, I, I, I played for my city and, and I was selected into the, the, the state squad. Um, I, I'm the same vintage as Sachin Tendulkar, so I would say that uh, my cricketing career more or less ended when I, when I watched Sachin play. Because uh, when you play cricket uh, seriously, you, uh, you think that you're going to play for India. And uh, you train like you're going to play for India. And then when I saw Sachin play, I said, no, he's going to play for India. I better pack my bags and figure out <laughs> what I should do with my life. So, so that was the end of my cricketing career. So I, I, I stopped there. Um, I went to Birla Institute of Technology and Science. I played there for the varsity. Uh, we had a cricket tournament and, and so on and so forth. So it was, you know, cricket was always uh, something that I uh, had grown up with, I enjoyed. And I was very surprised to see there was a, you know, ragtag group of people actually playing cricket in Iceland. I never anticipated that. So that was a fun experience. And we would get uh, teams visiting, like not professional teams, but amateur teams would be visiting Iceland as tourists. And they would want to play cricket, and uh, we would uh, we would entertain that, and we'll assemble the national team, and like whoever would show up would be the national team, and uh, we played a couple of games that way. Um, so this was 2007, um, and then 2008, 2009, I used to work for an Icelandic bank, and uh, the career and all of that kind of took over. I was appointed as the head of India for the bank, and I moved to Mumbai in 2008. So I kind of dropped out of the cricket scene for a little bit in Iceland and, and, um, and then the financial collapse happened and you know we, we, we moved yes. back to Iceland in 2009. And since then, I know I've been just keeping touch, but I've been uh, focused on doing other things. I'm the founder of Startup Iceland. I've been kind of building the startup community. But in the meanwhile, there were there were a group of very enthusiastic and uh, you know uh, serious uh, people who wanted to build cricket in Iceland. A uh, bunch of them used to play with me, and then more people moved to Iceland from the UK, from Australia, from uh, South Africa, from Afghanistan, Pakistan, and we had uh, refugees moving in who actually played cricket. So there were a lot more people. So that's how the the sport started growing. I think it was 2015, we formalized an association. Uh, it was actually called Copa Over Cricket Club. Copa Over is one of the small towns. I mean, it, Reykjavik is a big area and they're like small towns within uh, the geography. And, and we uh, formed an association and all the members, uh, there was a membership fee. And so it, it kind of started kind of very organically that way. And 2018, uh, you know, three years in, uh, so 2018, 2019 is when we first launched the Iceland Premier League. Uh, yes. And, and, and uh, ironically, it's called IPL because Iceland Premier League is also IPL. IPL. Yeah, the better IPL, as we call it. Yeah. <laughs> better IPL. Um, uh, but, but, but by that time, we had three teams. And, uh, and I went and watched some of the games and I was quite impressed with uh, the quality of cricket. There were a bunch of people who were actually really, uh, you know, uh, playing very good professional like cricket. And, uh, and I, and I uh, kind of uh, was uh, pulled back in to play. And so 2019, I started playing, uh, I played the first couple of games. And uh, what can I say? The cricket bug caught me again. Uh, but the organization and all of that, uh, obviously, you know, the teams have been doing well. And uh, um, the, the board uh, asked if I could, uh, you know, join the board and help in building the sport. So 2020, uh, I was elected as the chair. And, uh, uh, and then once I... Uh, got in we just you know started working on thinking about you know how how would we go about building cricket in Iceland and and uh, luckily for us at that stage um, there was um, lots more uh, expats moving in because of a couple of industries being built in Iceland in the biotech yes and uh, other industries so uh, there were a lot more interested cricket players so we formed the fourth team we we uh, and and, and uh, we actually conducted the first formal auction where we were able to redistribute all the players 
And uh, before that, it was just, you know, let's take uh, all the good players, let's spread them evenly, and then, you know, uh, hope hope uh, everybody plays fair. Uh, but we kind of um, changed uh, a lot of that. We, we moved uh, to an organization structure where Iceland Cricket Association, the nodal body, takes care of uh, all the administrative organizational aspect of the sport, which means conducting the auction, uh, it's, a, it's a neutral body, obviously, each of the clubs. So we basically said we wanted to have club sponsors. So four club sponsors were designated. They, they're yeah. on their own organization. They have their own boards. So they basically build their own funding. Um, the, the Nodal Association uh, takes care of uh, the tournaments, uh, the cost associated with that, uh, the organization of the tournaments, the scores, the... Uh, you know, all, all the other aspects of uh, running the sport. So we, we started that way. Uh, you know, obviously, like everything else, when you start, uh, there's a lot of chaos, but we were able to kind of uh, settle down. And uh, now we have uh, run, I think uh, in 2021, we conducted uh, almost 48 matches. Uh, we run four tournaments. Uh, we run the Iceland Premier League. We uh, have an indoor tournament called the Volcanic Ashes, uh, which is, again, starting this year on April 2nd. Um, and we play a 60-ball shootout, which is kind of like a T10. Uh, and then uh, we play a six-a-side tournament, which just happens over a weekend. And then we also have a, a, what we call a Samuel Gill uh, trophy. So Sammy is the vice chairman of the board now. Uh, Sammy is, uh, has been uh, playing cricket uh, nonstop from the time it started. So he's been the longest playing cricketer in Iceland. So uh, over 20 years, he's still, he still plays cricket. He plays, he's the captain of the Haftafirzer team. Uh, so we kind of uh, play uh, a tournament to kind of, uh, you know, honor him <laughs> for, for kind of sticking through all, all through the years. Uh, so, so this is kind of like the lay of the land, uh, but the nice thing is that uh, we have crossed over 100 members and we are uh, in conversation with the ICC. We kind of, um, you know, check maybe eight of the 10 boxes that they expect uh, a nation to have to become an associate member. Uh, but obviously, you know, building a sport uh, is a function of resources and uh, and money. You know, if you don't if you don't have resources, you, you're not going to get far, you know, building a pitch, building uh, tournaments, all of that requires uh, sponsorship. Uh, yep. Luckily for us, uh, we got a first corporate sponsor, which is the biotech company called Alvotech. They were the first one to sponsor one national, one of the teams. Uh, the West Dubai Volcanoes is sponsored by that company. And we are starting to make inroads into the corporate sector to to uh, to kind of showcase that you know cricket is uh, watched by millions of people and uh, it's a very popular sport. It's all new for Iceland, so we are kind of educating the market that uh, this is probably the second most popular sport in the world. Maybe you know if you ask uh, those of us who are from the east that it's probably the first most popular sport. <laughs> Uh, yep. so, so the debate, the debate is on, the debate is ongoing, but that being said, uh, our big vision is, um, within the next 10 years, we want Iceland to be a cricket playing nation. We would like to, uh, qualify and participate in the ICC T20 and even the one day tournaments. And hopefully we will, uh, qualify and be able to play, uh, at the test level. And, and I know that, uh, it all sounds, uh, so far fetched and, uh, uh, and uh, hard, but uh, as uh, one wise person told me, impossible is just an opinion. You know, it's not truth. You know, somebody somebody says it's impossible. They don't they don't have all the facts. Uh, we know that uh, if we put our effort and time and uh, the commitment to building the sport, the sport will get built. It's just uh, it's just like everything else. Uh, your 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 focus determines your reality, and and we are focused on building that. You know, this year we are actually launching. We have already done a couple of youth programs. We have actually gone and uh, played cricket with kids in school. So we're actually trying to formalize that in partnership with a number of sports clubs in Iceland. 
the 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 big thing is that you know Iceland is actually a very uh, sports crazy company country. There's, there's there's plenty of sports for the size of the nation. Um, and and most Icelanders are uh, you know quite athletic. They actually train, they work out, they play sports. So uh, this is not uh, you know a hard task to show them that you know cricket could be one of those other sports. And given the kind of the inflow of expats, a lot of the expats ha are bringing their families and they have kids. And those kids, uh, they know cricket. They want to play cricket. So we think that uh, it is not uh, such a crazy thing to imagine that in the next 10 years, we can actually build a pretty good uh, cricket team that competes uh, in an international level. Again, you know, uh, beating England is 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 one of those uh, aspirational goals. Uh, but being able to play England or being able to play against one of those uh, international teams would be a win, you know, uh, irrespective yeah. of what happens in the game. Uh, so so that's kind of the the broad story. So we are launching a youth program. We're also launching women cricket. Um, so, so, so that's the buildup as, as I, uh, as I think about it. And we just launched a crowdfunding campaign to, uh, to build more, uh, infrastructure to move us closer to the associate membership. And, uh, again, you know, the, I've been, uh, you know, I, I come from the startup world and, uh, entrepreneurship and startup thinking is about being creative and not trying to uh, follow the path of everybody else. And I have a group of people uh, in our clubs and members who are very committed to building the sport. So we have a lot of hands on deck uh, and, and all the tweets and all the, the Twitter uh, attention that we get is because we think that, you know, cricket is a game. It's a sport. You know, we just, we're just taking it too seriously. <laughs> we should just, you know, sure. have fun with it. Sure. Uh, by the way, you know, we're supposed to play, you know, play is supposed to be fun. Yeah. It shouldn't be right. so serious. It shouldn't be uh, as uh, we make it out to be. Uh, end of the day, um, you know, we're all kids. We're all grown up kids. So we should just uh, enjoy the enjoy the journey. And that's why we poke fun at everybody who takes cricket too seriously. And then let yes. me let me be the first one to say that beating England would probably be the most realistic aim right now. Like it's it's <laughs> it's very very possible. <laughs> like I, I don't even see that to be like probably like ten yeah. years down the line. Uh, I'm pretty sure that well uh, we would be cheering for Iceland against England. I think all three of us would what? definitely be. Oh, I have to, yeah, I, 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 absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean the the. What has been very encouraging for us is that, you know, uh, I think the cricketing community really loves a great story. Oh, and yes. Iceland cricket is a great story. And uh, we love the aspect of being an underdog. We love the aspect of drawing attention to the fact that there are a lot of uh, injustice in the sport of cricket. You know, uh, the, the, uh, the the world is you know uh, not evenly distributed it's unevenly distributed but those of us who who uh, happen to play the sport and build the sport uh, you know our, our motto of ice and cricket is grow the game you know that should be the motto of everybody you know yeah. so uh, starting with the big uh, countries to the small countries if all aspire to do that i think everybody will get the resources and the attention and everything else needed to really build the sport. But end of the day, uh, that's what it's about. We have to grow the game and uh, because it is, uh, it is a beautiful game at the end of the day. Right. Completely agree. And, you know, it's just England played appallingly and, you know, Iceland seems to know what they're doing. <laughs> and, and well, I mean, you know, we, we, have, we have some really, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say that uh, we have some, really talented players and i do believe that given the opportunity they will express themselves and they will play at the level that will you know give everybody a run for their money you know uh, that's that is the that's also the fun part about uh, cricket as a sport 
it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how big or small you are. What really matters is the 11 people on the ground right. and uh, how they uh, bring themselves, express themselves, and uh, really play without fear because it is a fun game. It's supposed to be fun. And if you enjoy and bring that aspect, I think on any given day, we can stand our own. Uh, but that being said, you know, we still need to get into the field. Um, we are, we are uh, preparing for that. And uh, we have good uh, Nordic countries like the, the Danish cricket team is a very good cricket team. Uh, we've been able to engage with them and uh, we might play some, uh, you know, friendly games with the Nordic countries, Sweden, Denmark, Finland and Norway. Uh, we are very close in terms of our proximity to them and also in terms of the development of the sport. And I think, you know, that's a good place to start. And, uh, you know, Europe, I mean, cricket is uh, one of the fastest growing sports in Europe, you know, yeah. uh, whether people realize that or not uh, it is very very real there's there's a lot more interest to play cricket all over europe and we have uh, uh, i'm part of a whatsapp group of all the organizers and all the european countries and aspiring associate members and associate members um you know it was funny the tweet the tweet you mentioned about the teams we have beaten and the teams we could beat uh, behind closed doors, there was a, a lot of outrage that we picked on some of the teams in our tweets that uh, we all should uh, kind of work together and try to, you know, support each other. And uh, we were trying to uh, emphasize to everybody that it was a joke and yeah. we should be able to laugh at ourselves. And uh, we do that all the time. You know, when we put out a tweet where uh, Iceland could beat England, Obviously, it's a very funny tweet yes. because it, it just seems probabilistically impossible, yeah. but still possible. <laughs> exactly. It's possible on any given yeah. day. I mean, we just saw Bangladesh um, uh, beat New Zealand in New Zealand in, in the yeah. test. And, and the test uh, to be so, really yeah. fair, in 2016, Iceland beat England in the Euros in the soccer as well. And that was... Yes that was not expected at all. So it's not unprecedented yeah. that Iceland has beaten yeah. England at something. So, but like, like you said, uh, probably the main question which I have as well in regards to how, because I, I come from a social media background as well, right? So for me, it's very interesting how Iceland cricket, and it's not just that one tweet, right? It's been like a very recurring yeah. theme of how you have kept it lighthearted as well as, you know, that sending a message of, this is what we are doing, uh, support us and how we are growing the game as well, right? So uh, from uh, our organization point of view, right? How important do you reckon is uh, your Twitter handle or your social media for you or just in general, the digital world? Because I remember uh, there was a campaign on Reddit as well on our cricket, uh, yeah. which supported, right? So in yeah. general, how, we, how are you utilizing that digital uh, presence of yours to push the sport uh, yeah, I mean, it is, it is, it is, uh, it is kind of our foundation, you know, that is the, that is kind of like the only way we engage with our fans. Yeah. Um, primarily because, you know, Iceland is, as, as I told you, you know, it's, it, cricket is a very, um, should I say, peripheral sport. Uh, those who play and uh, those family members and friends of those who play are the fans of the sport. And they usually come there because we play. So, we are actually trying to build a local fan base and I think it'll happen. And, and, and the digital media is by far the most powerful that we have to kind of uh, amplify what we are trying to do. And that's one of the big reasons why we started live broadcasting all our games uh, last year. And, uh, you know, we, we, we do that. Of course, you know, we can do a much better job with uh, more uh, investment in uh, showcasing uh, the games. So we plan to do that uh, as, as we grow. Uh, but uh, we, we are trying to broadcast all our games because a lot of our fans on our social media want to watch us play. And I think that's uh, fantastic. And uh, it'll only grow the sport. And I think if anything, yeah. uh, social and digital media is by far the biggest tools that are available to any cricketing nation. By the way, uh, we have used that uh, to the best of our abilities, and I think we can do better. I think you know we can actually invest in more things that uh, that uh, brings that to the forefront. 
that's Absolutely. nice that's i mean nice. i i completely agree because in terms of like emerging countries as well i think um the thing which uh, makes iceland to get stand out as well right that the, the first impression which i got or i how did i discover iceland was through their uh, cricket the the mm-hmm. twitter handle right, and right which is which right. is pretty cool because you know like as kids like if i was a kid uh, like i'm still a kid at heart but like <laughs> if i was a kid in iceland and I, I wanted to play a sport and i see because social media and kids right now are like the thing to be right so if i'm <laughs> looking at all these cool things happening on social media and iceland cricket is my team which is doing all this yeah. i want to play a sport it it kind of amplifies into the whole grassroots element right. of it right, right? uh Absolutely. In terms of like, uh, before I switch over to Dan for his question, like in terms of like your uh, progress right now, what would you reckon uh, are your biggest challenges uh, as of now, which right. you believe that should be conquered in yeah. the next couple of years? As well? I mean, you know, there's, 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 there's plenty of challenges. I mean, obviously, you know, uh, nobody has kind of built the sport like we are trying to do in public. You know, it's kind of like we're trying to build the sport while we are kind of showcasing all our uh, uh, methods. Uh, This is kind of very unique. And we believe that uh, because of social and digital media, we can actually do that better because then we also can amplify what we're trying to do. Uh, The big challenges that we have is obviously uh, to attract resources because end of the day, as I mentioned to you, uh, cricket is not like football, you know, you just have to have a ball and a field and then you're ready to go and play. Nobody needs to, but cricket, you need, you need a pitch, you need, uh, you need a lot of things uh, to make that happen. But, uh, but that being said, uh, we are getting a lot of interest and attention. As I said, you know, Iceland is a very uh, sports friendly nation and uh, we have a fantastic uh, sports infrastructure. Um, Iceland has uh, a lot of sports infrastructure to support uh, football, to support handball, uh, athletics, uh, and, and, and other uh, sports. So we kind of piggyback on that. And there are a lot of sports clubs. So we've been partnering with a bunch of them to actually promote the sport. It's only been uh, maybe a year since I took over as chairman where that has become a lot more mainstream. So we believe that that's the right way to go. We are in engagement with the Iceland Sports uh, Authority, which is like the Olympic Association. Um, yeah. and, and, and locally, there is you know, resources available. There's, there's plenty of companies and we just need to get them interested in the sport and uh, have some anchor sponsors to help us uh, build the sport of cricket. Um, we, we think that the n- membership is growing quite nicely, and I think we have crossed over 105 members now, and that means we will probably have a fifth team. And, uh, and, uh, and, and the, the challenges of growing this is that we need to stick to what we started and actually attract people to uh, jump in and help and participate in the development of the sport. And that is, uh, you know, easier said than done, you know, it's just, uh, because we have a lot of competing elements. So we just need to, uh, you know, get through this phase of trying to make a, a foundation for the sport. That's the big challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Dan, uh, would you like to go oh, ahead with yeah, your question? Really great. Um, you know, I mean, and for 2022, uh, uh, what's expected of, of the international lineup for Iceland cricket? Uh, are, are we going to see more uh, just matches with the Nordic nations or are we going to see Iceland doing more European qualifiers? Um, uh, in the short term, what can we expect to see? We, uh, I mean, uh, the at least for me, because this is new, what we are starting to learn and realize is that a lot of the games and organization happens a couple of years in advance. So the, the planning and uh, all of that needs to happen much further uh, early than uh, ad hoc. Uh, as I mentioned, the Danish cricket team uh, engaged with us and tried to, uh, we tried to organize a game, a friendly game, but they're just too busy. They, they're, they're playing for the T20 qualifiers and their calendar is totally full. Uh, but we are uh, inviting uh, teams from the UK and other countries to come and play us in Iceland. Uh, you know, Iceland's a great place to visit. And in the summer, uh, you know, we can play cricket uh, almost uh, 24 hours because there's, the sun doesn't go down and uh, the light is always there. 
So, so uh, that's a little bit of an attraction. Um, so, so we are, we are you know, in, in good discussion with a number of European countries to play more international games. Uh, but that being said, you know, uh, it, it, it all needs a lot more lead time to plan. So, so this year we have one team visiting us from the UK. It's a, it's a club cricket, so which will play against all our clubs. So the national team, we are in discussion, as I said, with a couple of European teams. So when when the venue and the schedule gets uh, finalized, we will uh, let uh, let our fans know that this is going to happen. That's Absolutely. nice. Fantastic. Yeah. So I just have a you know quick question, as you know, I understand that we don't have much time left. So could you mm-hmm. tell us a bit about uh, the progress in women's cricket across the country? Yeah. So. Um, as I mentioned to you, there are a number of expats who moved into Iceland. And with that, uh, you know, expats are not just men, you know, those are women who are working in the companies that have moved to Iceland. And there's been a lot of interest from them to kind of start uh, playing cricket. So, so we are actually going to formalize that. And uh, we also have a number of uh, uh, women who are from uh, England and Australia who live in Iceland. So they know that the women's sports is not, uh, you know, any second fiddle to uh, the men's sport. So, so we're kind of trying to build an organization around that. And we have some good uh, women leaders who are starting to uh, take that on. So, so we will formalize that. But that being said, you know, uh, it's, 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 it's all day one, you know, we're just starting out. So, you know, our, our ambition to build the women Iceland cricket team uh, probably will happen uh, later than some of the other aspirations. But that being said, uh, we, we, we basically want to kick that off this year and then uh, start uh, building uh, more interest from uh, yeah. women to, to join the sport. Because, uh, you know, uh, Iceland and, and uh, the Icelandic soccer team, uh, the women's soccer team is actually you know, very, very good. They're actually better than the men soccer team. And uh, the same is true for some of the handball and other teams. It's just that, you know, uh, because of the tradition and history, there are a lot more fans who watch, but not true in Iceland. When Icelandic women teams play, uh, you know, the entire nation watches and participates. So we have that advantage. We know that you know, when we start something like that, we will have the backing of uh, a lot of people. So that is the other part that encourages us to kind of put this in motion. Okay, one last question. I won't take, you know, more than a couple of minutes. So what's the kind of a pay structure thing with respect to the Iceland cricket players, you know, so how do you really, you know, take care of uh, the pay structure, you know, uh, like, uh, do the players get paid in time? Or, you know, is there a, yeah. or, so, you know, what are the insurance uh, today, schemes? And all yeah, that? yeah, today, um, uh, none of the players are paid. Uh, okay. Most, uh, all of them are volunteers. And uh, every, as I mentioned, you know, uh, our membership goes towards doing all the administrative stuff, which is conducting the tournament, maintaining the, the ground, doing all the things that we need to do to play cricket. But our aspiration is to move forward to uh, a much more professional organization where the budget will pay for the time of people who are helping build the sport. And uh, we, we actually have a plan in the next three years to get there. But, uh, but as I said before, you know, uh, a lot of the people are uh, volunteers and they're just happy to be able to play cricket in Iceland. And uh, hopefully we can change that uh, as, as more interest, support, sponsorship, and the fan base grows. That's nice. That's nice. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for being on the show. It was really a pleasure to hear from you. You know, there's such good stories, such good information. And uh, I think, yeah, uh, you know, to all our fans, uh, you know, please like, subscribe to our channel, comment on our videos. It's going to help us grow a lot. And uh, we're trying our best to, you know, cover such stories that, uh, you know, really mean a lot to us that are pretty much relevant. And, uh, I think uh, that's all about it. And uh, until then, uh, until, you know, next time, it's, uh, you know, on behalf of uh, Mr. Bala, Nikhil and Dan, it's Sadhat saying goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. Thank you.